with us on the Valder BB Show. I've got three great guests for you. Now, if you've got mm, problems with high gas prices, well, they're going to talk with us uh, live from the Bio International Convention about some of the world's um, biofuel, uh, what would I like to say, challenges going on, and I think this group has some answers. Uh, first, I'm going to talk to Jim Lane. He's the editor of Biofuel Digest. Then I'll have Heather Young, who is an analyst at the Energy Bioscience Institute in California. And then we'll wrap up with Paul Gilna. He's the director of the U.S. Bioenergy Science Center in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Thank you guys for joining me today. Well, thank, thank you. you. Well, this is a real important subject. It really is. Everybody understands high gas prices, but I don't think they understand that you can't keep using fossil fuel forever. So, Paul, if you want, Jim, if you'd like to start with us. Well, I think you're absolutely right. You know, we, we need alternatives. Uh, we not only need uh, alternatives to get to energy independence, but we need economic opportunities here in at home where we can use the materials, the waste residues around us um, and energy crops uh, to make uh, fuel alternatives. Uh, it's good for the environment. It's good for the community. Uh, it's good for that energy independence. So we win, you know, we win in a lot of different ways. Heather, will you tell me about the conference that you're at? Uh, yeah, BIO is a, a great international organization that looks at uh, all aspects of biotechnology, and that's been really in instrumental in developing these new fuel products. So we see uh, applications in uh, trying to use different sources of, of feedstock, uh, like Jim was mentioning, uh, waste and, and other sustainable sources for fuel production, and really driving those costs down and making them more affordable. Okay, Paul, have you said something about cost? Cost can't be the only factor, but I know it is. You know, people aren't complaining because gas prices aren't as high. Just let them go up again so they'll be complaining. But there's something bigger to me in biofuels. It's my environment. This is the only planet I have to live on, so I've got to be very judicious in, in resources that I use. doesn't seem like it now, but 20, 30 years from now, it's going to be really important. That's very true. I think we're all focused on biofuels as, a, as what we call a sustainable alternative to uh, our current fossil fuel-based supplies. When, when we take oil out of the ground, there's essentially nothing to replace that oil once we've used it up, whereas when we look at uh, biofuels and crop-based biofuels, um, then we know that we have a chance to uh, perform sustainable agriculture such that we continually uh, replace and replenish that stock as, as, we're, as we're harvesting it for biofuels production. Well, let me ask you, as being a part of the uh, U.S. Energy Science Center in Oak Ridge, what kind of, how do you tie into the convention here? Well, what we're, what we're looking at is specifically at what we call cellulosic biofuels. That is, production of biofuels from, uh, let's say, non-food uh, crops. Um, so we talk about uh, grasses like switchgrass or miscanthus or even trees like poplar trees. Um, or for that matter, the leftover from uh, the corn ethanol process, the stalk or the stover, uh, and performing research that allows us to more efficiently and effectively get at the sugars in those feedstocks that are needed for biofuel production. i got to ask you one more question, Paul. Um, the foods that you're using, it seems like it has to be pure, pure food, and what I mean is, Americans waste half the food that we grow in this country. So that's the source. Yes, yes, certainly uh, such areas as municipal wastes in general uh, can, can all be put to good use. And I, I think the important point here is that there isn't uh, necessarily one ideal source. We need an array, a diversity of, of uh, sources. Jim, can you tell me, as the editor of uh, Biofuse Digest, what does your magazine bring to the table? Well, one of the things that, that is important in this whole movement is that there's a lot of science that's new. There's a lot of uh, uh, technology that's new, processing technologies. There's a lot of policy turbulence, um, a lot of discussions about a lot of things. So there's a lot of noise out there, and what we try to do is bring uh, turn that into signal and really uh, create uh, you know news you can use out of this uh, flow of invention and innovation that we see every day in this sector. Is biofuels just for people inside the industry? Because I hadn't heard of the magazine, but of course that's not my industry. 
Well, it's read at 14,000 organizations around the world, so uh, you know a, a much broader uh, array. Um, there's a lot of people who are stakeholders. Um, anyone who's in a community uh, that can that can make fuel locally um, has a stake in looking at this as an alternative. It's uh, it's certainly something that every community, every individual should be aware of, and to understand if that's a solution for their community, um, and and that is something that, that they can find in Biofuels Digest and, and also in other publications. Is there somewhere they can find a copy of it to get a deeper understanding? Because people just drive cars. They don't really care what makes the car go. It's biofuelsdigest.com. We'll tell you everything you need to know about how to find us. There we are online. Well, Jim Lane, Heather Young, and Paul Gilman, thank you so much. And the convention is taking place now, this week, in California. In That's D.C., right. in Washington, D.C. In D.C., I'm so sorry. There I'm we... trying to put you guys in California because it's beautiful. <laughs> well, it's, it's hard to imagine good news in Washington, but there is some good news this week at Bio here in D.C. Well, thank you guys for joining us, and please make a difference in planet Earth. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.